So, uh, how do you feel about all this? About all this stuff? About all these things? Like, like, how do you feel, like, right now? As in right now. As in, like, right now. As in, what's your opinion on how you feel? As in, how do you feel about how you feel? As in, how you felt about how you felt when you felt the way that you felt? And if you feel like you'll feel like you'll ever feel like that again. I mean, is the way you feel about how you feel affecting the way that you feel? And how much does a feeling weigh? And how long are they? And how many feelings does it take to fill somebody with emotion? And how many flavors of feelings are there? How many have you tasted? And do you like to mix them? Because, because I do. In fact, I was overcome by a little cocktail of feelings just the other day. I, I had it nestled somewhere in my head, and it was some combination of loneliness and harmony with the universe, and I got all wrapped up in it like a warm embrace. And, and at first, I hadn't realized that I had felt that feeling. At the moment that I felt the feeling of feeling that feeling, it warmed me immensely. But the moment that I felt the feeling of wanting to continue to feel that feeling, well, I felt it slipping away from me. And the more I tried to get it back, the further it slipped away. And, and now I don't know how to feel about feeling feelings. <laughs> now, I'm not so married to my feelings. I mean, I'm sure you've heard about faith and reason, right? They've divorced again, and some claim that they can't ever be reconciled, but whenever they're in a room alone together, they can't keep their hands off of each other. They can't keep their feelings in check, and I'll admit to having watched them before, like a voyeur in the corner of the room, stroking the part of my mind that loves controversy, watching as reasoning eases itself in behind faith, and faith thrusts itself into reasoning, and somehow they just can't seem to stay together. And some have faith that there is a reason, and some reason that it must be faith. And all I'm saying is that it seems unreasonable to consider yourself reasonable if you have no faith in your reasoning. And it seems unfaithful to consider yourself faithful if you have no reasoning behind your faith. And I know it's considered taboo to, to be so voyeuristic about the whole thing, but, but where do you stand if, if not in the corner? And how do you fit? If I give you a large stick in a vacant beach, can you draw me a conclusion in the sand that persuades all the truth out of the ocean? And if I were to poke a glory hole into your Pandora's box, would you have the restraint to keep your opinions to yourself? See, I, I have a theory about opinions and, and fossil fuels. I say that they are a lot alike. They're both flammable. They're both considered more valuable than they actually are. They are both so effective at what they do for us that we keep digging them up and overusing them. Your opinions, your opinions uh, are the bastard offspring of your half-hearted beliefs. They are the currency of your ignorance. The exchange rate is dependent on how you feel that day. You wanted what you wanted when you wanted it until you got it. And now, now you prefer to think that you never wanted it in the first place. Preference. Preference is a borrowed art form. Borrowing is intuitive. Intuition is a uniquely crafted walking stick. A blind seeing eye dog, seeing eye dog, seeing eye dog. Righteousness is a quantum leap of reasonless faith in faith. Oh, faith. It is a method of craftsmanship that doesn't involve any tools. It is so archaically contemporary faith. It is a large hanging canvas, almost completely bare, except for a few sprinkled drops of dark oil paint, looking like a colony of lost beauty marks. You know, the artist's abstract assessment of complexity, of complexity through simplicity, their, their brave portrayal of artistic restraint, a mosaic uh, of emptiness, a photo negative of the universe. They, they can mount anything onto a wall these days and make it look like a work of art. And we can stand here and stare at it until our eyes bleed, until our objectivity ripens. And the truth of the matter is that the truth doesn't really matter. It is, the, it is the desire to find it that matters, and if we keep sending search parties to all the same places, and if we keep turning over the same stones, and if we keep digging up the same patches of dirt, if we keep following the same dried out footprints that we left there from the day before, then we're never, ever gonna find anything different. And if we keep falling for the slightest dip in temperature like leaves that are helicoptering into a pile of mostly wasted potential, if we keep whittling down our walking sticks into kindling, we're gonna burn down the whole forest before we even get a chance to explore it and I know how desperate we are to know that we want to understand how it all came to be how how the start started how how the beginning began what happening happened to happen to make all these ap happenings happening happen Existence couldn't have been created unless creation existed before existence. And if creation created existence, then what made creation exist? And how many leaps of faith does it take to jump to a conclusion? And how many brushes with fate does it take to sweep evidence under a rug? And what size should the holes in the filter be when extracting the proof right out of the pudding? 
Why have you gone through such pains to conceal yourself, sir? Some questions can only be answered with questions. We might think we know who, or what, or when, or why, or how, but we're still gonna sit here asking why. 